guys welcome back to take those and in this video we will look at the maximum number of moves in a grid problem which is from lead code number 2684 and we will be looking at the optimal approach let's now look at the problem statement in this problem you are given zero indexed m by n matrix grid consisting of the positive integers you can start at any cell in the first column of the matrix and traverse in the grid in three directions that means from r comma c you can traverse to row minus one comma column plus one you can go to row and column plus one and you can go to uh, r plus one and c plus one so three directional movements are allowed such that the value of the cell you move to should be strictly bigger than the value of the current cell we need to return the maximum number of moves that we can perform now before looking at the problem statement if you look at the constraint then each of the dimension that is m comma n which is row comma column will be less than equal to 10 to the power of 3 and the multiplication of this dimension should be less than equal to 10 to the power of 5 so the number of cells in the matrix will be less than equal to 10 to the power of 5 each of the value will be positive from 1 to 10 to the power of 6 let's now look at an example for better understanding now in this example we have taken a matrix of size 3 by 4 and our constraint is we should always start at the first column the second constraint is uh, whenever you are move, making a movement from a row comma column point then we can always move in three directions okay now if you want to move up from a point r comma c then you will be moving to the previous row and if you want to move down then you will be moving to the next row and in all these three movements you are just going from a column c to column c plus one so keeping this in mind if you move to the top right then you are going up by one row and you are moving forward in the column if you are moving horizontally on the same uh, row then the row is same but the column will be the next column and if you are moving to the bottom right then you are increasing your row number so r plus one and you are going to the right hand side so c plus one as well so these are the three movements allowed i hope you have understood this and the third point is you can only make the movement if the values are strictly increasing like if you consider can you move from this 2 comma 1 to 1 comma 2 you cannot move because it is not strictly increasing it is the same so given this question and the constraint our goal is to find the maximum number of moves that we can make so if you look at it if i start at 2 i can make the first move to 6 second move to 7 third move to 9 so this can give me uh, the maximum number of moves which is 3 there can be more than one possibility for making the maximum number of moves we can also go from 3 to 6 6 to 7 and 7 to 9 that is also fine uh, but then we just need to return the length of the maximum number of moves okay now if you look at the second example in this case we can start uh, from this first column and then we can make a move uh, to the second column any of the values okay but if i make a move let's say from 1 to 7 then i cannot go up because this is out of bound i cannot go right this is a smaller value i cannot go to the bottom right as well and this will be true for all these numbers if you check because all the numbers on the right column of it are lower okay and that is why uh, we cannot move more than one move here and the answer will be one fine so i hope you have understood the problem statement now if you try to go with the most intuitive approach that will be by using recursion and let's see what we can do with recursion now if you apply recursion then we will be trying each of the starting point one by one so let's say that we will be starting at this one if i start at this one then i will try to make all the three directional movement so if i make a call to the bottom up then it will be going out of bound so there should always be a validity check can i make this call so you cannot make this call can you make a call to the right hand side i mean it is a valid index it is within the bounds of the matrix and it is also a strictly increasing value so yes you can make a call to it so the number of moves will become uh, from zero it will become one now from eight you cannot go up you cannot go right because eight is not strictly increasing you cannot go down as well so we will be uh, returning back from this set having tried everything so this eight will return a value zero because from eight you cannot go any further right and this one uh, will have the move value as equals to one because when it went in the in the top right then the value returned would be zero because we cannot make that call right when i made the right call uh, then the value returned by eight was zero but then we could actually make this call so the move was one here and when i make the bottom right call then let's try it out if i make the bottom right call to seven can i do this yes i can do this so i will add one plus whatever number of moves i can make from this seven 
so can i make a move from this 7 to 8 yes i can make it so i will add plus 1 to this value 1 plus whatever number of moves i can do from it from it i cannot go up i cannot go to the right hand side i cannot go down as well so this will be returning a value 0 so when it returns a value 0 0 will get added to this one and so uh, this will have a move value of 1 right now so can we move right no it is not possible it is not strictly increasing and also we cannot move down so this 7 will be returning a value 1 so 1 will get added 1 plus 1 become 2 so here the number of moves which will come is 2 so i will I'll always try to maximize the number of moves at any node so already known uh, max moves were 1 and now i got 2 uh, via 7 so i will be updating the max moves at 1 equals to 2 right so similarly i will be trying with each of the cell and uh, you see that whenever i try with any cell let's say i was trying with 3 then again i will end up with 7 and if i end up with 7 then again i will end up exploring the same path 8 and uh, checking out all the rest of the values right even if i start at 2 then again i will end up at 7 and start exploring all the paths you see that there is a repetition of the sub problem that we are solving what is the sub problem being at an index r comma c and then exploring how much I, I can extend from this cell forward is a sub problem isn't it so if i say 1 comma 1 is a sub problem what is the meaning of this it means that if you are at 1 comma 1 whatever is the value here let's say 7 then what will be the maximum number of moves that i can make from 1 comma 1 only when three directional movements are allowed with strictly increasing values so the answer will be stored here which will be one right so that is what is the sub problem here so we have seen that there are repeating sub problems now if you force yourself to solve by recursion then each of the cell will be having three options and how many such cells are there there are r into c cells that means in an m by n matrix there will be mn number of cells so each of the cell has three options so three will be multiplied mn times okay mn times and therefore the total uh, number of possibilities that you can get is three to the power of mn so that will be the time complexity using recursion and the space complexity will be the depth of recursion which will be order of number of columns because in every recursion call you are moving forward by one position if you can move right and that is the reason that the time complexity is order of mn and the space complexity of is order of n but we know that there are repeating sub problems because as i explained what is the sub problem and you can reach to the same sub problem via different path now it does not really matter about what is the path but we are just concerned about the length and so if we can store the result at this 1 comma 1 if you explore it the first time then the next time if 2 comes in and ask about okay what will be the maximum path from 7 to the right hand side following all the constraint then it can simply return a value 1 right without having to actually explore so we will use that technique of memoization and let's see a dry run for the same example now in this case i will be taking a memoization table which will be storing let's say if it has a value 1 here then this means that 1 is the maximum number of moves that i can make if i am present at 1 comma 1 following all the constraint okay so this is the meaning of the sub problem now if there are 2 3 and uh, and let's say 4 here then the answer will always be given by the 0th column because you know that we have to always start at 0th column so we can start from any of these cells and we want to maximize the result right so if uh, we can start at 0 0 i get a max length of 2 if i start at 1 0 i get a max length of 3 and if i start at 2 0 i get a max length of 4 so definitely 4 will be the answer right now let's uh, do a dry run and then you will understand it better so i will start at this 0 comma 0 I will prefill this entire memoization matrix with the uh, minus one values the reason i took minus one was it is impossible answer since number of moves can be minimum zero it cannot go below zero so minus one will indicate that i have not calculated this result now if i start at this zero zero then i will be starting at this one if i make a recursion call from one can i move up i cannot move up okay so this is not possible can i move to the right hand side yes i can move to the right hand side I'll move to 0, 1. From here, can I move up? No, it is not possible. Can I move to the right hand side? No, I cannot move. Can I move down? I cannot move. This 6 is smaller, right? So, at 0, 1, I cannot make any of this call. So, I will store a 0 here. That means 
if I'm present at 0 comma 1, I cannot make any move. Okay, so this will be returning a value 0. But since I could make a move from 1 to 8, so I will add 1 to whatever this 8 returns. So this 8 will return 0. So the moves at the 0, 0 will become 1. Okay. Because saying that if I'm present at 0, 0, then for, from my current exploration knowledge, I can make a maximum number of one move. But I will try the third possibility as well. Can I make a move from 1 to 7? Yes. So I will add 1 plus whatever number of moves I can make from 7. Now from 7, can I make a move to 8? Yes. So I will add 1 to whatever I can uh, do from 8. From 8, can I move up? No. Can I move right? No. Can I move down? No. It is not possible. So from 0, 2, it will return a value 0. So that means at 0, 2, I can say that the value will be 0. This means that if I am present at 0, 2, then I cannot make any move with the given set of constraint. So if this is returning 0, the length will be extended by 1 since I could make a call from 7 to 8. So here I will get a value 1. Okay, so at 1, 1, I will have a value 1 from our current knowledge. Can I make a right call? It is not possible. Can I make a down call? It is not possible since it is not strictly increasing. So this will return a value of 1. Okay. So this 1 will get added and you see that at this point 0, 0, I got a new maximum which is 2. So this will be updated to the new maximum value which is 2. Now we have explored everything starting from 1. Now our next move will start at 1, 0 which is the next item in the column. Now this is value 2. Can I make a move uh, to the top right? Yes, I can make because 8 is uh, strictly uh, increasing. So our length will increase by 1. Now at this 8, this is index 0, 1. Have I already calculated it? Yes, we have already calculated 0. This means that we cannot make any move from 0, 1. So without making any move, we will be returning 0. So 0 will get added and you will have your first value here at 1, 0 being 1. Okay. But I will try the other possibilities too. So from 2, I will go to 7. So you see, I will go to 1, 1. 1, 1 is already calculated, right? So this will return a value 1. So if this returns a value 1, 1 will get added, then the max length will become 2 here, okay? So now this will be updated to a new maximum 2. I will make the third possibility call. From 2, I will make a call to 6. Yes, I can make it. So the length will increase by 1. Now from 6, this is not calculated 2 comma 1 is not calculated so from 6 can i make a call to top right no it is not possible can i make a call to the right hand side yes so the value will be 1 plus whatever a uh, number of moves i can make from this 7 it is again not calculated 2 comma 2 so from here can i make a top call no can i make a right call yes so it will be 1 plus whatever number of moves i make from 2 comma 3 again not calculated so from here, I cannot make any call because all of them will be out of bound. So this will be returning 0. So the value at 2 comma 3 will be set to be 0. At this point 2 comma 2, the value will be 1 plus 0, 1. So 2 comma 2 will be having a value 1. So this will return 1. At this point 2 comma 1, the value will be 2. Okay. Now, if you try to make the bottom right calls for both of these, uh, it will be out of bound. So I did not show that. Now from here, if you want to uh, move back, then this will be returning a value 2 and at, at this point 1 comma 0 you will have 3. So at 1 comma 0 you got a new maximum which is 3 right and we are done. Now again we will be uh, trying it from this index 2 comma 0. So if you try from 2 comma 0 then can, can I make a top right call? Yes. So 1 plus whatever number of moves I can make from 1 comma 1. You can see 1 comma 1 can uh, move make one move. So just write 1 here and this will be 2. So at 2 comma 0, I'll write 2. Can I make a right call? Yes. So this value 2 comma 1 is already calculated to be 2. So just add 2 to it and this value will be becoming 3. So overwrite this to 3. And now can I make a bottom right call? No, I cannot make it. So in this case, since we are saving the repeating sub problem, so we don't have to calculate it again. Now the result of maximum number of moves will be the maximum of the 0th number column that I explained and so the answer will be 3 in this case, okay, which will be starting from either 2 or this 3, fine. Now in this case, uh, our space complexity will be order of mn because of the memoization matrix we took of the size mn and the time complexity will be at each cell we will be going maximum 3 times, so 3 times of mn. And 3 times of mn can be said to be order of mn. 
So these are the time and space complexity of the dynamic programming approach. Let's now look at the code. If you are someone who is looking to prepare for top product based company within a limited time of just three months, then we have brought for you both the DSA and the system design live interview training program. The most important feature of this program is you get a filtered and condensed structured curriculum in depth discussion of all the topics and my guarantee of your understanding one on one guidance with me and live weekend classes to know more about the training you can whatsapp us on this given number in this code we are given the grid and I will be finding the number of rows and columns so I'll be taking the memoization array of the size row and column and I will be defining a max moves variable initialized with zero and I will try to make uh, the calls that means recursion calls from all of the starting points of the first column okay and uh, then this is the recursion function which is the max moves now I will be passing the current coordinates in r comma c and I will be passing the grid and the memoization matrix now if I have already calculated the maximum number of moves from r comma c then just return it don't process it again otherwise if we have not processed it then I will take max moves variable equals to zero and I will try to make all the three possible calls so the first call is to the top right first I will check the validity is it going out of bounds or not it should not go out of bounds and if it is within the bound then I should check for the strictly increasing condition if both these conditions are true then I can make a call and I will add one value and uh, I will go to the next cell of exploration one value is added because the I can make this move right otherwise we will just return back so this is the top right call similarly the second call is the horizontal call and the third call is the bottom right call okay out of all these we will always try to maximize the maximum moves you see maximum moves equals to already known max moves comma one plus uh, whatever we get from the next call right and finally uh, we have to save the result into the memoization array before returning so this will give me uh, the maximum number of moves as our answer because we are tracking it across all the columns right so i hope you were able to understand it if you still have any doubt then feel free to comment below and i'll try to help you as soon as possible like and share our video and subscribe to our channel in order to watch more of this programming video see you guys in the next video thank you